Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. Today, I'm back in the mobile hardware reviewer seat to take a look at the Intel Core i9-11980HK, the fastest processor Intel has on offer in their new Tiger Lake H45 lineup. A couple of months ago now, we did take a look at the Core i7-11800H, and while it did impress me with its performance gains over Intel's prior generation parts, I ultimately ended up with mixed feelings. The 11800H was still unable to outperform AMD's equivalent Ryzen 5000 parts in the majority of productivity applications, and the generally higher pricing of the Intel platform weakened its advantage in gaming. So today, in looking at the Core i9-11980HK, I'm very curious to see how Intel's flagship processor stacks up in a final production system, and specifically whether it's worth getting over a Ryzen 9 CPU or Intel's own Core i7-11800H. How much has Intel been able to eke out of their best Tiger Lake 8-core silicon? And it's this comparison between the 11980HK and 11800H that's of most interest. Both CPUs are very close in their fundamental design and specifications. Both are 8 core chips with 16 threads and 24 meg of L3 cache. Both have the same Intel XE integrated graphics. The only major difference is in the clock speeds each chip is listed to support. While the 11800H has a base frequency of 2.3GHz and a maximum turbo clock of 4.6GHz, the 11980HK has a base of 2.6GHz and a maximum turbo clock that hits 5GHz, provided CPU cooling is adequate. This gives the Core i9 model a clock speed advantage of roughly 10%, which gives us a rough look at how these parts should differ. The only other advantage the 11980HK has is on the platform side. Again, most of the stuff here is identical to other Tiger Lake H45 processors. 20 lanes of PCIe 4.0 attached to the CPU, Thunderbolt 4 support, DDR4-3200, 10 nanometer super thin process node, but being an HK model, it also supports overclocking. While all Intel H-series processors allow you to configure any power limit you want, including above the standard 45 watts, even on locked parts, it's only the 11980HK that actually allows you to modify the clock multiplier table and several other values in XTU or other utilities. Typically though, this is only relevant for the biggest and beefiest laptops, as power and thermal limits are going to be much more significant limiting factors than the clock multiplier table for most designs. The test system for today's benchmarking is the MSI GE76 Raider from the same product family that we looked at when testing the Core i9-10980HK, so we should be able to do a nice comparison there. Inside this laptop is the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3080 laptop GPU with 16GB of VRAM and a 135 to 155 watt power limit. And for our testing, we're using 16 gigabytes of good quality dual channel DDR4 3200 memory standardized across all H-series laptops we've tested. Outside of the basic hardware, it's a nice model with a 17-inch 1440p 165Hz display, which really suits this GPU well, as this sort of hardware has moved beyond 1080p resolutions in modern games. It's not the slimmest or lightest model, but it's not meant to be. This is a performance-focused laptop that's still relatively portable, and it has a really nice metal build quality, though I could take or leave the RGB light bar along the front edge. However, this isn't a laptop review. This is a review of the Core i9-11980HK. So like all our previous laptop tests, we have benchmarked this system power normalized. What this means is we keep all boost behavior stock, but utilize a long-term power limit of 45 watts, the default for all these processors. This gives us the ability to make apples to apples comparisons across different laptops, ignoring any OEM configurations or potential cooling or power differences between models. As a result, it's a true test of the CPU's capabilities in comparison to others, not just a test of how well a specific OEM can configure their system to use the most power. However, there will be some power scaling data later in the review, so you can see how various chips perform at different power levels, which may be useful for your buying decisions. Anyway, on to the benchmarks. First up is Cinebench R23. In this workload, the 11980HK performs reasonably well, offering a 7% performance uplift over the Core i7-11800H. This makes the 11980HK more competitive with Ryzen, matching the performance of the Ryzen 7 5800H, though ultimately still falling behind the Ryzen 9 5900HX by 9% when looking at the same power configuration. The margin is down to just single digits though, and we see a substantial 28% performance uplift over the Core i9-10980HK from the previous generation in this heavy multi-threaded workload, a good sign for the efficiency improvements Intel have made here. 
The single thread performance results in Cinebench R23 are strong for Intel, with some caveats. The 11980HK is marginally faster than the Ryzen 9 5900HX in this test. I recorded a 3% performance difference, which is close to the margin of error, but it is ultimately faster. It's also slightly faster than the Core i7-11800H and 17% ahead of the 10980HK. However, the gains seen here between the 11980HK and 11800H aren't as high as the differences in rated clock speeds would suggest. With the 11980HK being a 5GHz part and the 11800H coming in at 4.6GHz, the Core i9 part should be around 8-9% faster, but here it's only 3% faster. Why is that? Well, that's because the 11980HK rarely runs at its full 5GHz clock speed. It can do so in very short bursts, but it's rare to see sustained performance sit at that clock speed. Cinebench R23 single thread takes multiple minutes to run, so for most of that run, the 11980HK sits at a lower clock speed. In our long handbrake CPU encoding test, the 11980HK is only slightly faster than the 11800H, 4% to be exact. This is large enough to be outside the margin of error, but again, it isn't exactly a mind-boggling difference between the eight core parts, and clearly over a sustained period, the Core i9 processor is only slightly more efficient. In the end, the Intel part ends up 15% behind the Ryzen 9 5900HX, and 15% ahead of their previous generation model, the 10980HK. We see very similar results in the Blender Classroom workload. Here the 11980HK is 8% faster than the 11800H, but still 14% slower than the Ryzen 9 5900HX. It's in these sorts of heavy multi-threaded workloads that take multiple minutes to complete that the Ryzen processor has an efficiency advantage at 45 watts, and therefore a performance advantage as well. In Chromium Code Compilation, which is another long-term, heavily multi-threaded workload, the 11980HK performs well. 6% faster than the 11800H, which allows it to sit basically neck and neck with the 5900HX from AMD. With a 20% lead over the 10980HK, there are plenty of reasons to upgrade to a new model laptop from Intel's direct prior generation. The gains here are quite large for a laptop form factor. As we move into shorter tests, Intel's Tiger Lake H45 is clearly the way to go for MATLAB this generation. With a larger amount of L3 cache than AMD's equivalent models at 24 meg versus 16 meg, the 11980HK is able to outperform the 5900HX by 10% in this workload. Combined with great single thread performance, Intel does well in these sorts of tests. Similar story in our Microsoft Excel number crunching test. This is one of the largest margins between the Core i9-11980HK and Core i7-11800H at around 19%, which seems to be a byproduct of both higher clock speeds at a given power level and the ability for this MSI laptop to boost quite high in terms of power. The result is 20% higher performance than AMD's Ryzen 9 5900HX in this workload. For general everyday workloads as measured in PC Mark 10's Essentials test, there is no real difference between Tiger Lake H45 and AMD's Ryzen 5000 lineup. So if you're just interested in basic app loading, web browsing, video conferencing, and those sorts of things, either current generation part will suit you well. Very similar results in PC Mark 10's applications workload as well. There isn't much separating the Ryzen 9 5900HX and Core i9-11980HK here, which makes sense given what we've seen in previous tests comparing lightly threaded performance. In 7-zip compression, the clear winner here is the Core i9-11980HK, similar to the previous Excel test we were looking at. The Core i9 part performs strongly here with a 14% performance advantage over the Ryzen 9 5900HX. AMD's current generation parts are more in line with Intel's 10th generation in this workload. However, that flips entirely when looking at decompression. Now the 11980HK is 15% slower than the Ryzen 9 5900HX, and only a few percent ahead of the i7-11800H. AMD processors are extremely strong at decompression workloads and have been for some time now. In Adobe Photoshop using the Puget Systems benchmark, the Core i9-11980HK performs well, slightly outperforming the Ryzen 9 5900HX, though realistically both systems provide a similar level of performance. While the 11980HK is a decent 10% faster than the 11800H here, matching the difference in clock speeds, the 11980HK isn't that much faster than the 10980HK. I believe a lot of that is down to this workload preferring frequency, where the 10th gen Core i9 part actually has a small advantage over 11th gen in lightly threaded apps like this. 
In DaVinci Resolve Studio 17, it's always a little tricky to compare across different laptops as the GPU has a significant influence here. But what we can see is that with the same RTX 3080 laptop GPU, the new 11980HK model does deliver better performance than the 10980HK, delivering a 13% higher score. There is a GPU difference, but overall it seems Intel and AMD are very competitive in these sorts of workloads this generation. Very similar result in the Adobe Premiere export test from Puget Systems. 15% better performance comparing the 11980HK to the 10980HK, which allows the Intel system to perform well and competitively with the Ryzen 9 5900HX, again noting the difference in GPUs, meaning we can only talk generally about performance. And finally we've got Adobe After Effects. The combination of the 11980HK and RTX 3080 laptop GPU is very powerful in this workload and delivers strong performance, beating most other systems we've tested and delivering substantially higher results than the 10980HK. Now it's time for some power scaling data looking at how the Cry9 11980HK compares to other CPUs at a variety of power levels. Unfortunately, I was only able to push the MSI GE76 Raider up to around 75 watts sustained. The internal cooling solution here is much more heavily GPU focused than others I've looked at. Nevertheless, we can see some clear trends here. The basics are that at a given power level, the 11980HK is between 5 and 10% ahead of the 11800H, with the margin shrinking at higher power levels but still noticeable. The general power scaling behaviour we observed with the 11800H also remains here in that scaling is much better than AMD's Ryzen 8 core processors at higher power levels, but overall the CPU is less efficient than the Ryzen 9 5900HX at lower TDPs. In the real world, this means that laptops with bigger, beefier coolers will see a smaller performance margin between the 5900HX and 11980HK, and somewhere around 85 to 95 watts I would expect both to be roughly equal. However, in slimmer and lighter systems, and even in standard size gaming laptops, AMD still holds the edge here, and the higher the power level, the further away the 11980HK pulls from the 10980HK. Now it's time for a look at gaming, and we'll be focusing on 1080p tests with the display connected to the CPU's integrated graphics using technologies like Nvidia Optimus. This gives us the most CPU limited results, but is still a realistic use case for most laptops. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider, we actually see a performance regression comparing the 11980HK to the 10980HK in the same laptop with the same GPU. The new 11th gen model is 5% slower, and sits with identical performance to the 11800H that we benchmarked earlier with the RTX 3070 laptop GPU inside. This is disappointing, but not a total surprise given what we've seen comparing 10th and 11th gen platforms over the last few months. However, for the most part, this is not the sort of result you'll see. In Borderlands 3, for example, the 11980HK is notably faster, especially in 1% lows, where the new model delivers 15% higher results that are more in line with AMD's processors. Average frame rates have also increased by 4% gen on gen. In Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, which tends to be relatively single threaded, the 11980HK enjoys an 8% performance uplift over the 10980HK on average using the same RTX 3080 laptop GPU. This once again makes it neck and neck with the Ryzen 9 5900HX in a benchmark that is CPU limited. In Rainbow Six Siege, Intel processors have a clear advantage, delivering higher frame rates than systems based on AMD's Ryzen 9 5900HX. The 11980HK in this test is also 10% faster than the 10980HK when using the same GPU, a good result for Intel's latest generation part, though of course not at the same level of performance uplift as in productivity workloads. There are plenty of times where you'll be primarily GPU limited on a gaming laptop even when playing at 1080p. Control is one of those examples, where there is no difference in performance between the two system configurations. If you are going to be playing these sorts of titles, or playing mostly at a higher resolution like 1440p, the CPU really doesn't matter too much, especially when buying in the Core i7 or Ryzen 7 tiers and above. Death Stranding is another solid result for the Core i9-11980HK and its performance uplift over the Core i9-10980HK. We're looking at a 10% difference here, which is on the higher side for margins that I've seen so far. Rounding things out, we have the Hitman 3 Dartmoor benchmark. I was perhaps expecting a larger performance delta between 11th and 10th gen systems in what is a very CPU heavy game, but it turns out the difference is only 4% in favour of the new 11980HK. That keeps it in the glut of modern laptop processors along with the 5900HX and 11800H. 
In a head-to-head -head comparison looking at the MSI GE76 with the RTX 3080 laptop GPU and either the Core i9-11980HK or Core i9-10980HK, on average at 1080p, the new 11th gen model was 3% faster across an 18 test sample. That's pretty negligible in my opinion and it's disappointing to see a performance regression of 5% or greater in 3 of the titles. However, this is balanced by a performance gain of 7% or higher in 6 of the titles, so it really depends on what the exact games you are playing benefit from the IPC uplift with the new Tiger Lake processors, or whether the clock speeds are more relevant, in which case last generation models will have the advantage. However, in productivity workloads, the 11980HK is substantially faster than the 10980HK. In heavily multi-threaded tests, the new 11th gen model is up to 30% faster at 45 watts, and that figure will grow at higher power levels. This is paired with decent single thread performance gains of around 15%, which is the biggest leap Intel has made in the H series for some time now as the architecture has been updated. In contrast, the difference between the 11980HK and the model a few rungs below it, the Core i7-11800H, is small. In multi-threaded workloads, we generally saw just a single digit performance gain, with some outlier tests pushing over into the double digit realm. And then for single or lightly threaded tests, there really isn't much of a difference, especially in longer term single threaded tests, as the 11980HK can only hit 5 GHz in short bursts. Then when it comes to comparing Intel versus AMD, we have the battle of the Core i9-11980HK and Ryzen 9 5900HX. Now AMD does actually have a higher tier CPU, the Ryzen 9 5980HX, but that chip seems rare and we haven't been able to test it yet. In any case, the results are mixed. In longer term multi-thread workloads, AMD has a clear advantage, with the 11980HK falling up to 15% behind. However, the 11980HK is faster in other workloads, holding a small advantage in single-threaded tests, and a few edge case wins in other tests like MATLAB and Excel, which are cache heavy. The average results of all these numbers show the 11980HK and 5900HX pretty much neck and neck, but it will come down to what tasks you mostly perform on your laptop, as to which CPU is the more powerful choice. Overall, the Core i9-11980HK doesn't change much in terms of what we know about Intel's new Tiger Lake H45 processors. As expected with minor clock speed gains over the Core i7 model, the 11980HK is only slightly faster than the Core i7-11800H in the majority of productivity workloads. Typically, the margin is in the 5-10% range. This does suggest that 11980HK CPUs are better binned and more efficient than lower tier 8-core CPUs which is great for those that want the absolute fastest Tiger Lake chip you can get. But the margin isn't large enough to significantly change Intel's competitiveness in high performance productivity or gaming laptops. The good news here is that Intel are offering a substantial upgrade for owners of 10th generation laptops or older in productivity. The 11980HK is at least double digit percentages faster than the 10980HK in almost every workload, with the heaviest multi-threaded applications seeing 30% gains. We are no longer in the era of minor Skylake iterations year after year. This is a full architectural overhaul on a new 10 nanometer Superfin process node with plenty of benefits in every area. Outside of that though, it's pretty hard to get excited about the 11980HK. It's competitive with the AMD Ryzen 9 5900HX to some degree, but still loses in multi-threaded workloads where it's clear AMD Zen 3 design is more efficient. Intel appears most competitive in gaming when comparing Core i9 to Ryzen 9, but even then, based on my testing so far, I'm yet to see any groundbreaking differences. If anything, the Core i9 part is slightly faster in games, and that's not a strong enough reason on its own to prefer an Intel Tiger Lake system. The 11980HK also suffers from competition from Intel themselves. I just don't see a compelling reason to purchase an 11980HK laptop when the 11800H exists and offers 95% of its performance, especially when the Core i9 CPU looks to be costing buyers $300 plus more in an otherwise equivalent laptop. At that sort of price difference, the 11980HK seems totally pointless for regular buyers and just a money grab for those with deep pockets that are willing to pay for marginal improvements. The value proposition is even worse for Intel when you compare 11980HK laptops to Ryzen 9 5900HX laptops with similar GPUs. Typically, the AMD configuration is available for $500 less or even greater in some situations, which puts the value firmly in AMD's court at the moment. 
with the two platforms delivering similar performance on the balance of things, productivity favoring AMD and gaming favoring Intel, I just don't think such a large price difference is even close to justified. Really, they both should have roughly the same price, and that means that the Intel part should be cheaper. The only remaining point to discuss is Intel's platform advantage, which I have mentioned in prior videos and is still relevant to some degree today. The 11980HK offers PCIe 4.0 support and Thunderbolt 4, the latter of which is probably the key selling point to some buyers. Intel CPUs also tend to be found in a wider variety of laptops and with better availability, although this advantage is decreasing with each month as more Ryzen laptops launch. So while the 11980HK may be a poor value choice, it might also be the only choice in the laptop configuration you want. At the end of the day though, in this generation, I'd be strongly recommending you look primarily at Core i7 or Ryzen 7 laptops at the highest, as that's where I feel the value lies for most buyers. I would, for the most part, just be ignoring these Core i9 models and yeah, getting the better value parts. Anyway, that's it for this test of the Intel Core i9-11980HK. We will be back shortly to test out the Core i5-6 core model. I have got one of those on hand for testing, so that should be pretty interesting to see how it stacks up against other CPUs, particularly the Ryzen 5 5600H. If you're interested in supporting the channel, well, we've got new merch, new hardware unavailable merch. If you're interested, links are in the description below for that. You'll also find in there links to our Patreon and Floatplane accounts. If you want to support the channel directly, um, you'll get access to things like our Discord chat, live streams, behind the scenes videos, all that good stuff. Anyway, that's it, and I'll catch you in the next one.